Here our next example of how to use conservation of energy to solve problems in physics we have a little bit more complicated problem if you compare that to the previous one we still have a spring that has a spring constant in this case 2000 newtons per meter which is being compressed a distance of 60 centimeters the object placed in front of it has a mass of 4 kilograms the block is released the block starts sliding forward it has to overcome a distance of 10 meters along the horizontal path with a friction of 0.2 meters. Then it hits the incline. At that point, there's no longer any friction on the incline. And the question is, how high will it reach along the incline? So not how far along the incline, but how much height will it gain before coming to a stop? So again, the only thing we have to worry about is the initial state, the final state, and any friction loss throughout the process. And of course, we're going to use the equation energy initial equals energy final or any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy is equal to any final potential energy plus any final kinetic energy plus any heat lost or energy lost due to overcoming friction or wind resistance and so forth we have friction so definitely there will be something lost right here all right work put into the system that is equal to zero because we are not pushing the block while it's moving. Potential energy initial, yes, we have that because there's a compressed spring right here. So we have one half kx squared. Kinetic energy initial, we have none because it's not moving at that, potential, at that point. Potential energy final, we do have because we have gain height, so it'll be mgh. Kinetic energy final would be zero because it's not moving at the very end when it reaches its maximum height, and energy lost will be there. It's plus the friction force times the distance along that path where there's friction. What are we looking for? We're looking for H. So we have to solve this equation for H. Uh, we can go ahead and do that by moving this over to the other side. So we have 1 half kx squared minus force friction times distance equals m. GH. Now, if you look at it like this, notice any energy that was stored in the spring, which will be given to the block, minus the energy required to overcome the friction, will equal the final potential energy that it has. So that makes a lot of sense when you look at it like that. We're now going to divide both sides by mg, so we can then say that h is equal to the left side of the equation, which is 1 half kx squared minus force friction times distance divided by the coefficients of h, which is m times g. Now, the only thing left to do here is find out what the friction force is equal to, which is equal to the weight of the object times mu. Remember that we have the weight of the object because of gravity. We have the normal force, which is equal to that weight in magnitude because it's on a flat surface. So n is equal to mg, just in the opposite direction. And then, of course, for the friction force, we take it n times mu or mg mu. So when we plug that in here, we get the height gained is equal to 1 half kx squared minus the normal force, which is mg times mu times d, all divided by mg. Now notice, if this term is bigger than this, of course, it doesn't even make it to the incline that will stop prior to making that incline. And that could happen. We don't know for sure. If all the energy is lost before it makes the incline, of course, h will be zero. And then the question may be, how far along this, this horizontal uh, path does it go before coming to a complete stop? So let's find out what that's equal to. So this is equal to uh, 1 half times k. I'll leave the units off, make it cleaner. 2,000 times x squared, which is 0 0.6 squared, minus the mass, which is 4, g, 9.8. Mu was equal to 0 0.2 right here, and the distance was 10 meters. So this is the energy lost by overcoming friction. That's how much energy was stored in the spring. And if we divide that by the weight of the object, which is 4 kilograms times 9.6, that will tell us how high it managed to go. OK, so let's figure out the two things at the top separately. So I have 0 0.6 squared at times 2,000 equals. Uh, divided by 2. So it gives us 360. So this is equal to 360 minus. So we have 4 times 9.8 times 0.2 times 10 equals. That's 78.4. So notice here 
that the amount of energy required to overcome friction is less than the amount of energy that was stored in the spring, so it will, it will make it to the incline and go up some distance, and of course divide that by 4 times 9.6. All right, so make that minus, subtract it from 360, and divide by 4, and divide by 9.8 equals, and it's 7.2 meters. And that will be the height gained by the object after it makes the incline. Of course, we weren't asked how far it incline, we simply asked how high did it go. And that's how you do a problem like that.